got three names on my ID, guys. Literally three. Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm back again with another video and as you might tell by the title of this video, I will be doing a get to know me tag. I should have done it before I could um, actually start off with the uh, whole channel and stuff. So I will be doing it now for you guys. I did post a question on Instagram asking everyone to feel free to ask me anything and everything. I will answer. I did not specify what I will be using it for. So um, I will keep everyone anonymous. But then I will answer some of the questions that are relating mostly to you guys knowing more about me and what I'm about and basically the tea about me. So yeah, I will answer some of those questions. But first, I feel like I should just tell you more about me so let's get right into it i am makoma jeanette homozo my surname is ramano i have got three names on my id guys literally three um i will explain why i have three names on my id and how all of those names came about because they definitely did have a reason growing up i was always called homozo and that's the name that i got used to and then i had to go to primary school I realized that actually this name that I've been called with is actually not on my ID. So um, I did have a talk with my mom and she explained to me that no, Homos is actually a name that I gave you because of such and such reasons. So I was born in a family of five. It was my mom, my dad, two brothers and myself. Unfortunately, mom's firstborn, um, I never got to meet him. He passed away when he was 12, so I was born many years later. They don't really talk about it much, but from what I've gathered is that he fell ill and then he passed away a few days after that. So there's just two of us. Um, well, growing up, I knew that it was just two of us. So Homozo is a Setswana name. It is actually Homozo, meaning sympathy, comfort, everything to do with um, making someone feel better. So when my mom had me, she decided she's going to call me Khomuto because I came Khomudize. Having another child was a blessing from God and she felt like Mudimu Umu Khomudize. Hence, she called me Khomuto. It's my favorite name as you guys might have noticed because it's the name that I'm always using. Um, the name Khomuto, ne? It was not on my ID. So what I did was when I turned 16, I remember very well. At school, everyone was required to bring... Um, their birth certificates and sign some forms and bring them back to school because the following day there was people from home affairs to come and do their IDs for them. I did not do that because I knew that I only have two names on my ID and I wanted to add Homozo. They said I should have an affidavit of um, me wanting to insert that name. So I did that. I did it with my mom and it was successful. I took it to Home Affairs and then they added the name onto my ID. So it resulted in me having three names. I should have removed Jeanette at the time, but I just felt like, you know what, I'm not going to remove it. Uh, so it was not on my ID, but growing up, I was always Homoto, so I felt like I needed to add it. So my other name, which is my first name, is Makoma. I do not know what Makoma means. I have asked my dad, I think I was young at the time, so um, I don't really remember what he said it was. I will ask him, but what I know is I got that name because in baby they believe if a newborn is always crying, um, they've tried everything, they've taken her or him to the hospitals to get them checked out, and still there's nothing that's been found, but the child is just so restless and always crying, then the child is crying for a name. I would cry for no reason. They did not know what to do. And the elders in my family suggested that I be given a name. And after they gave me that name, apparently I just stopped crying. Yes, I was not completely quiet. I would cry here and there. Obviously, babies cry. But after they had given me that name, the restlessness stopped. So, yeah. The other name, the last one, is Jeanette. Guys... My brother decided, you know what, uh, mom gave her a name, dad gave her a name. I'm also going to give her a name because he loved me so much. <laughs> okay, I'm just kidding guys, but yeah. So he gave me the name Jeanette. Um, I don't really use Jeanette, I don't really like it, but I never really removed it from my ID. I don't really have a problem with that name. I did have thoughts of actually removing it from my ID because... 
I feel like I don't need it. But thanks to my brother for giving me that name if you're watching this. Oh, and another story, guys. When I first bought my car, when I bought my first car, actually, um, they were applying for the thing of financing the car. But then there was one bank that we did not get response from. And when we checked, me and the guys at the dealership, they found out that, okay, EPSA has... I don't know if I'm supposed to be mentioning the name of the bank, but oh well. EPSA said they will not be able to finance me because I've got too many names. Guys, <laughs> as weird as that might sound, that's what happened. They said I've got too many names, so they cannot finance me. So yeah, they did not finance me because I have too many names. That's when I realized that, you know what, actually I don't need so many names. I think two will just do Makoma and Humoto. But anyway, I will remove it at a later stage. Maybe, maybe not. So I was born and raised in Johannesburg, to be specific in Park Town. I was born at the Florence Nightingale Clinic. It used to be in somewhere in Johannesburg. I'm not really sure where exactly, but I know that's where I was born. Um, yeah, so I was born in Park Town, raised in Park Town, went to school in Park Town. Everything was Park Town. So um, my primary school, I went to Rosemead Primary School. It's also in Park Town. It was. Um, like a walking distance to school so I'd walk to school um, so I did my grade 1 until my grade 7 and then I went on to high school I went to Holy Family College in Park Town as well it was a Catholic school I enjoyed my years there primary was miserable guys it was times when I didn't want to go to school because of the teachers there as I was saying my high school years were the best because I would always wake up I would get ready and go to school and enjoy. And I did my grade eight at Holy Family College and my grade nine at Holy Family College. Um, I had a lot of friends, it was great. Everything was going well. Um, I was good, my grades were good. Everything was going well. And most of the times I was in first place at the end of the term. So it was really great. Um, my academics were great, they were fire, they were perfect and everything and then I went on to grade 9 same thing my parents were really proud of me and then stage mama some of you guys might know it as the adolescent stage so yeah that got over me I don't know how it happened but at that time my mom was um, staying in Pretoria and I was in Jova with my dad my brother and my brother's wife and their son which is my nephew Everything was going well for me and I feel like maybe I was rebellious or my dad was just overreacting. He had curfews for me. Uh, I'd have to be home at about 4 p.m. He didn't like my friends. Like basically there was just a few that he liked but he would mention that he does not like my friends. But when I think of it now, I actually thank him because if he was not that strict towards me, I don't think I would be where I am right now. So uh, I sort of like thank him. At the time I used to hate him. I used to wish bad on him. Oh, God forgive me for that. And I wish I had listened and I wish I had not disobeyed him in the way that I did. So my rebelliousness led me to being sent to Pretoria to go and live with my mom. Hey, that was the hardest time of my life at the time. I feel like because I knew what I was doing in Johannesburg, friends, I felt like I couldn't do what I was doing in Joburg, in Pretoria. So I was not happy. I hated my parents. They both agreed on the fact that I had to go and stay with my mom. So that's what happened. And then I had to go to another school, which was Loreto Convent School in Pretoria. It's also a very good school, a Catholic school. It was an all-girls school. So yeah, I didn't really enjoy it there, guys. I was, my grades, my marks, they started dropping drastically. I do not know what it was. I think I was just not happy there. Um, it was an hour away from home. So I'm from Mabopani, club had to be specific. So it was like 45 minutes to an hour's drive. So the only difference was that I was using school transport. There was traffic in the mornings. I was, I was not against traffic. I was like, if the traffic's going that way, I'm going that way. When traffic comes back, I'm coming back with the traffic. So it led me to being on the road every day from four to eight guys i'm not exaggerating and i still not make it on time guys it was draining me of everything that i had 
I could not study. I could not do homework. I was always tired. School would come out, would come out at two, but then I'd be home at about seven or eight, the earliest. I couldn't do anything, guys. I couldn't do anything. My marks dropped. So I sat my parents down and I told them that this is that, guys. I'm as you can see, my marks are not so good. I think this place is not good for me, and they agreed with me and. They decided, okay, for the rest of the year, I think it was three months left, it's fine, travel from Joburg to your school in Pretoria. Even though the distance is bigger, but I was against traffic, so I would make it on time. And then at least my marks improved, but my dad decided, no, I think I'll take you back to Holy Family College. And when I went there, they said, you know what, we do not accept grade 11 students. But because you're one of our best students, we will take you back. So yeah, when I went to Holy Family College, I passed very well, went back to my first position, my first place, in metric I was prefect, and yeah, everything was going well again, and I passed with good marks, and then I applied to university. I applied at the University of Johannesburg, and I was taken in for radiography, which was actually my first choice. It was really something I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to be in the health field and thank goodness they had accepted me. But what I did not know was that I had to look for a hospital in which I will practice. So lucky for me, I got it in the last minute. There's other friends of mine that were in the same class as me and complained that they had been waiting for that space for two years. I think I was one of the lucky ones. I think God had destined me to go and do radiography. I think that was it. I studied my first year using a student loan. My parents didn't afford to take me to school, but then my dad um, took his um, pension, I think two years later, and he was able to pay the student loan. So even when I worked, I didn't have to pay the student loan. So God bless him. He's been about me ever since day one. I know I might not have understood what at the time, but now I completely understand and I thank him so much. And yeah, I've got really supportive parents. I apologize about that. My camera went off, so I had to charge it. As I was saying, then I went on to my second year of study. I was granted a bursary to study, so it covered my second year and my third year. So... At the end of 2017, I graduated, guys, with a diploma in radiography, and it was the best time of my life. I was so happy. I had my daughter when I was, I think, 20, turning 21. So it went on to show me that having a child young is not really a failure. It goes with what you want out of life, and you have to just follow that and do what you want and prove everyone wrong. And here I am now. So with my daughter, I was doing my second year of study at UJ when I fell pregnant. I fell pregnant in June, um, according to calculation. The following year in February, I gave birth. I was still 20 at the time, turning 21 in two months, two to three months time because uh, I am born in May. So on the 28th of February, I gave birth to a beautiful baby girl. She is two years old now. She's my pride, my joy, my everything. And using a really pretty little girl. <laughs> and currently, I am staying in Northwest. I moved here last year when I found a job beside. So currently, this is where we are. We're in Northwest. We do go to Johannesburg here and there because, I mean, that's where my life was that's where it has been that's all that i know so coming here was a huge um change for me but then you know what you're not gonna grow without changing staying stagnant in one position will not grow you so i feel like me coming here has made me grow so much so i'm thankful for the experience i'm thankful that i'm here most of all i thank god for putting me where he put me at the moment and currently i am doing my b-tech in radiography because i felt like i'm not going to live with a diploma i don't know about everyone else but me i i don't see myself with a diploma for the rest of my life i don't know if i'm going to study further after this but then currently i'm just doing my b-tech and then i'm just going to take a break from school because guys wow you're the stress hi it's too much <laughs> So yeah, and yeah, guys, I'm going to get into the questions that I was asked on Instagram. I will try and answer about 10 of them, not all of them. There's just too many of them. So yeah, so the questions are on my phone, guys. I'll be reading them from here. What's the one thing you would grab if your home was on fire? Guys, I would grab my daughter first. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'd grab my daughter. 
let's hope that never happens but the first thing i'd grab honestly is my phone guys this is my everything in here guys if someone were to steal this phone they have stolen my life my phone my phone is the one thing i'd grab if my house was on fire the next one do you have any siblings um i think i might have covered this in the introduction of this video but yes i do have currently i just have a brother he is 35 at the moment i think yeah he was born in 1985 so i do have siblings and the next question is what got you through your darkest time yo guys i've been through so many dark times but the one thing that has lifted me up is prayer there's nothing there's nothing that has got me out of my darkest time apart from prayer. It's always where I run to when in time of need. Prayer is what has always got me through my darkest time. How do you feel to have this life? I'm not sure what kind of life she is referring to, but I feel blessed to have this life that I have. These days that I have to live and to enjoy with my family, to enjoy with loved ones i just feel blessed to have this life that i have and i feel like i wouldn't have this life if it wasn't for god i hope i've answered your question where are you from i was born and raised in park town and i wouldn't say that's where i'm from now because my parents moved to pretoria so i am from where am i from i'm from pretoria <laughs> because my parents stay in pretoria when they moved to pretoria i wasn't staying with them full time anymore so yeah i can say that is home um but i was born and raised in johannesburg and right now i stay in northwest so i am from northwest in a city called um Clexton. so yeah that is where i am from are you in a relationship <laughs> I always get this question so many times. I am in a relationship. I've been in a relationship for a couple of years now with the most amazing man ever. In Tiritu Mahadi, he has paid Lobola for me. I am taken. I am happily taken. And yeah, I wouldn't trade him for anyone else, guys. I am happy where I am. And he means a lot to me. He means the world to me. The reason why I haven't changed my surname yet is the fact that first we have to do our traditional stuff. We have to do the Zulu part of the um, marriage and we also have to do the Sitsuana Sipedi part of the marriage. So we haven't done all those stuff yet. So I will change my surname when we have our white wedding. So I can't do it. I'm still a Romano but soon to be Mangupo. So I am taken. Sorry guys. <laughs> um, I'll just add two more that I can answer. Um, I'm so, so, so inspired by you. How have you become so successful and keep it going? Thank you so much. <laughs> I really love to hear such words. People who look up to me and who feel inspired by me. But I couldn't have done it without God, guys. I am a true believer in God and I believe everything is possible through Him and no one else. Um, I think it's from a very young age, I knew exactly what I wanted and I knew how it was like asking for stuff. I felt like, you know what, I, I want to I wanna be a someone in life. I want to be able to do everything for myself, by myself, without having anyone to sort of like excuse me to sponsor me in a sense i don't know if i'm putting it in the correct terms but i felt like i want to be able to do whatever it is i want to do at my own time with my own money so that is what drove me to being who i am right now i knew that for me to be where i want to be i need to make sure that i do well in my academics i need to make sure that i do go to varsity and i will make it which led me to actually going to varsity making the most of it and making sure that i get good grades to be a someone in life i got my diploma and i felt like it does not stop there so i decided you know what i'm going to do my btech um and further my studies so that's what i did i just my my rule in life is if you want something just go for it just go for it because if you do not go for it then what are the chances of you getting what you want in life or being 
whatever you want to be in life you only live once guys so go for what you want don't wait on anyone don't wait for anything do you do what you want and make sure that it works if you set your mind to it anything is possible guys literally and then the next question is what are the first impressions that make you take few steps to know more about a person that is a difficult question the first impressions okay it's actually okay once i've broken this down it makes so much sense first impressions for me to actually want to know someone that person needs to be inviting kind and i'll also do the same if we don't gel then we don't gel but it's so much easier to make friends with someone who is accommodating who is who will let you in you know i'm not a cold person if you're nice then i'm going to be nice if you're not nice then i just don't waste my time you know i just move on uh, i'm not in this world for anyone basically but yeah if you show an interest i'll show an interest so that's how it is and you need to be accommodating before you can actually know someone that person has to invite you in their personal space you can't just throw yourself at that person so yeah that's basically how i feel about that so yeah i'm sorry to those that um to those questions that were not answered most of them are compliments thank you so much guys i, I really appreciate the com the compliments and i've taken them to heart and i'm glad that you guys see me in the way that you guys see me and i really appreciate the support so, okay guys i think i've come to the end of this uh get to know me tag video and i hope i have answered all your questions i hope you sort of like know a bit more about me that you guys didn't know to those of you who knew some of the things that you already know about me thank you for watching and yeah and to those who have subscribed i really appreciate it thank you so much keep subscribing keep liking my videos and there will be more to come those of you who have not subscribed please subscribe now guys and join this family turn on post notifications so that you're the first to know if i have um if I have uploaded a new video and yeah, appreciate all the kind words and those who are in support of me and this channel. So thank you so much guys. See you again in another video. Bye.